Good morning everyone. It's been a long time since I've made a video tutorial of any sorts. I've just been really busy. Life tends to catch up with you every so often and that's what my life's been like. But hopefully things are going to settle down over the next couple of months and I can get back into making a few video tutorials. I don't know if you've been following my blog postings recently, but I've really gotten into OpenGL lately. I ended up writing an OpenGL library for a friend of mine who's doing his masters. And I stripped the fixed function pipeline out of OpenTK and then released it as an open source framework. It's got a few uh, math libraries, stuff like that built into it, so it's pretty easy to use. So I'm going to go ahead and use that in this tutorial. So in this tutorial, it's our first tutorial, we're pretty much just going to be grabbing the tools we need, compiling the OpenGL library. We're going to be using tau.freeglut to create an OpenGL context, and we're just going to create a window. That's it. And that's kind of the typical first OpenGL tutorial is just to get the OpenGL context in the window display. So we're not even going to draw anything to the screen. It's just going to be a black screen and it'll be great. So the tools we need, we need some sort of IDE and C Sharp compiler. I use Visual Studio Express Edition. Uh, it's no problem to use something like Mono Develop or Xamarin Studio. You can do this on Linux, you can do it on Mac, you can do it on Windows, of course. You need some sort of Git client. So I use Source Tree, but you could use anything you like. Uh, you can check it out from command line, whichever works best for you. And then we'll need to head on over to GitHub and snag my OpenGL for C Sharp library. So let's do that really quickly. I'm going to copy this clone URL and I'll open up source tree and I'll just tell it to clone in your repository. All right, so that guy's good to go. And lastly, I'm going to be using tau.freeglut to create my OpenGL context. If you'd like to, you can use SDL or GLFW, or you could create a context on your own. But I'm going to use the Tau framework, so I'm going to download the Tau framework, which I actually have already installed, but I'm just doing this to, to show how to go about it. And while that's doing its thing, through the magic of me already having it, I'm going to head on over to Program Files x86, Tau framework, and here I've already got Tau.freeglut. All right, so. My first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Visual Studio and I'm going to create a new project and I'll call this OpenGL Tutorial 1. And I'll make it a console application for now. All right, I'm going to wipe out a few things I know that I don't need. A lot of these references that are included by default, I just don't need them, so I'm wiping them out. All right, so in this folder here, my project folder, I'm going to create a new folder called Lives. And in here, I'm going to put everything that I'll need to, to reference. So one of those things that I need to reference is this freeglut, tau.freeglut.dll. So I'm going to go and copy that into the Lives folder. Another thing I need is the dll.config for tau.freeglut. So this is tau.freeglut.dll.config. What this does is it tells, it tells tau, This tells freeglut where to find the DLLs it requires. So for example, on Linux, it looks for libglut.so.3. On Windows, it looks for freeglut.dll. Free and on OS X, it looks for system library frameworks, glut framework, glut. So that is what makes tau freeglut work on any computer that's out there. All right, the next thing I need is I actually need freeglut.dll, which is the unmanaged library. So I'm going to go and snag that and put that in my lives folder. And lastly, we need the OpenGL framework. So to get the OpenGL framework to work, I'm going to open up another copy of Visual Studio. And I'm going to open a project, and the project is going to be that OpenGL for C Sharp library that we loaded up from Git. So you can see here it's got all the core methods, but it also has math such as vector3, vector4, matrix4, so on, as well as some constructs such as textures, some basic geometry, shader programs, vertex buffer objects, and so on. So I'm just going to go and hit build solution, and I'm also going to build the release mode here. And then let's go and copy the results, both the config file and the DLL, into our lives directory. All right, so that's everything we need. We've already gone and built the OpenGL library. We've got tau.freeglut all ready to go. So now I just have to add some references to my tutorial. So here I'm going to go and browse and I'll browse to my Visual Studio 2013 project directory, OpenGL Tutorial 1, Lives, and I'll grab my two managed DLLs. So that's OpenGL.dll and tau.freeglut.dll. I'll add those, okay. And then finally, I also need to go and 
snag that freeglut.dll unmanaged library and drop that into my debug output so that OpenGL tutorial 1.exe knows where freeglut.dll is. All right, so now the next step is to go and actually initialize glut. So let's do that. I'm going to go and create some variables to store the width of my screen and the height of my screen. And now we'll call, sorry, I'm going to be using tau.freeglut as well as using OpenGL. So I'm going to go and initialize glut. And when I initialize glut, I'm going to give it some information about what sort of display mode I want. So I want to use double buffering. And I also want to use a depth buffer. So double buffering avoids any flickering that might normally happen while you're drawing. So if you were drawing directly to the screen, you'd be able to see as the program was actually drawing to the screen. So you'd see your triangle sort of filling in and it looked very strange. So by using double buffering, you actually draw to the back buffer, which is in video memory, and then you swap the buffers very quickly. So you swap the frame buffer and the back buffer, and that way you don't get any tearing or strange drawing stuff going on. And then the depth buffer is what is used to store information about not only what color each pixel is, but where it lies in depth in the screen. And this allows you to avoid overdrawing things like that. Make sure that the closest object is actually what gets drawn, and any objects behind it get removed or aren't displayed on the screen. All right, we'll also set our window size, and it's gonna be equal to width and height. And finally, I'm going to go and actually create my window. create window, And I'll call this my OpenGL tutorial. So now we need two things. Well, really on, on PC we only need one. We need to supply some sort of idle function. So I'm gonna call this on render frame. On max, we also need to supply a display function. On display. So this display function can be empty because the Mac just needs it for, for Glut to work properly. On render frame is where we're actually going to do all of our heavy lifting. So in here we need to go and clear the previous frames information. So all the depth information that was drawn during the previous frame and all the color information that was drawn during the previous frame needs to be erased. So I'm going to go first set up my viewport which is 0, 0 width and height. And now I'm going to go and clear both the color buffer mask, or color buffer bits, sorry. Let's see, color buffer, what am I doing? Clear buffer mask, sorry. Clear buffer mask, I'm gonna send the color, or clear the color buffer bit, and I'll also clear the depth buffer bit. Now the last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to swap buffers. So I'm going to take what was in my uh, working buffer, which is my back buffer, and actually make it the frame buffer that's drawn to the screen and bring the frame buffer back into my back buffer so I can swap those buffers back and forth and that makes sure that you don't get any of that tearing I was talking about before. Now we'll just tell Glut to enter its main loop and we'll run our program and you can see here that we've got a nice 1280 by 720 pixel window. It's all black because all we're doing is we're wiping out that color and depth buffer information but we've got a valid OpenGL context we're up and running with tau.freeglut to create our window, and we've got the OpenGL library that we've uh, cloned off of GitHub, and we're using to actually clear the uh, color buffer bit and the depth buffer bit. So we're doing pretty good. And that's it for OpenGL tutorial number one. In the next tutorial, we're going to create our first ever shader program, and we'll draw a simple triangle to the screen. So that's it for now. I hope you have a great day and happy coding.